There are many ways to add code to a site, and if you're new to Squarespace, you might be confused about when to use a certain method over another. So in this video, I'm going to break down the differences between adding code to the custom CSS window, page header code injection, site-wide header code injection, code block, and markdown block, so you can feel confident about when to use each. If you're using Squarespace, you are probably somewhat familiar with the custom CSS window. It allows you to write CSS to change the visual design of your site. This is helpful when you need to change the style of elements across all pages of your site that cannot be achieved through Squarespace's interface. For instance, if you wanted to make only your H3 headings uppercase, that can't be done through the Squarespace style editor as it would set all your headings to uppercase. But using the custom CSS window, a line of CSS saves the day. Now what if you only wanted to change the elements on a single page? You could amend your CSS to include the page's collection ID, a unique ID to each page that you can use to limit the scope of your CSS to only one page, or you could write the CSS in the page's header code injection. The page header code injection is a way to add HTML, CSS, or JavaScript to a single page. So whatever code you insert into this window will only display on that one page. This window is commonly used to add small CSS snippets such as hiding the header and footer on sales pages. You could write page-specific CSS in the custom CSS window, as I mentioned before, but adding it to the page header code injection keeps your custom CSS window much more organized by not cluttering it with simple page-specific CSS. Plus, if you delete the sales page in the future, the CSS is deleted with it. So you wouldn't end up cluttering your custom CSS window with unused CSS from now deleted pages. You can also add JavaScript to the page header code injection. JavaScript allows you to make functional changes to the page, not just visual ones. There are two site-wide code injection fields, the header and footer. They function exactly the same as the page header code injection, except the HTML, CSS, or JavaScript that you put in these fields will be injected onto every page of the site. For that reason, this is generally where you will install plugins that you purchase. The only difference between the header and footer code injection fields is where the code is placed on the page. The page header code injection is placed in the head of the document, while the footer code injection is placed right before the closing body tag. Generally, your plugin CSS is placed in the header code injection and JavaScript is placed in the footer because of the order that content loads on the page. Because CSS styles HTML, you want the CSS to be loaded before the page content, otherwise you risk seeing a flash of unstyled content before the CSS is loaded. JavaScript, on the other hand, manipulates the elements on the page, so it needs to be loaded after the page content. If the JavaScript loads before the content it is manipulating, nothing will happen because the content doesn't exist yet. Thus, in general, plugin CSS is placed in the header code injection and JavaScript is placed in the footer code injection. Please note that these are not hard and fast rules. These are just general principles. So if code is usually placed in the site-wide code injection, why would I ever need to place it in a code block? Well, you might have a situation where the code you're adding to your page needs to appear in a specific place on the page. For example, if you're embedding a form via an iframe or a script, you can place the code block where you want the form to appear and then embed the code inside it. If there is already a code block, why also have a markdown block? Well, the markdown block accept a specific syntax called markdown that the code block does not. Squarespace created a markdown cheat sheet that you can follow to use the markdown syntax. For example, placing a hashtag before text will make it an h1, 2 will make it an h2, 3 an h3, and much more. Interestingly, at the time of this recording, the markdown block also accepts scripts, so you could use it as an alternative for embedding scripts in the code block. This would be valuable for anyone on the personal plan who doesn't have access to embedding using the code block since it is a premium feature only available on business plans or higher. In regards to the availability of these features, all of them are available on the business plan or higher. On the personal plan, you will only be able to use the custom CSS window and markdown block. 
You can add HTML to the code block, but you can't embed any scripts. The page and site-wide code injection windows are not available on the personal plan. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you are a Squarespace beginner, check out my Squarespace plugins and courses on my website and consider subscribing to my channel for more Squarespace content like this. I hope to see you in the next one.